Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are looking at the top of the line of the new British introduced battle cruisers. That's a completely hypothetical line, at least the upper parts. And this is the end of it. This is the Saint Vincent. Now you can, if you look at the ship and the, the layout with the strangely split superstructure, and uh, you can sort of definitely see a resemblance to the to HMS Nelson. And that's because Nelson was one of the outcomes of the eventual designs that the British made for battleships and battle cruisers during the late uh, during the, around the 1920s and just before the Washington Naval Treaty came in and ended a lot of these kind of projects. The guns on this ship are relatively large. And these guns were actually the 457 millimeter guns or 18 inch guns that were considered for these kind of ships. The British were, well, I wouldn't say they were behind, they were building very good guns, but uh, they hadn't really built something very large at that point. And it turned out later on, for example, when shooting at things like the Bismarck, that they didn't have to because the existing caliber was perfectly capable of doing significant amount of damage even to heavy the armored parts of these ships, but the British were uh, experimenting around with a 457mm uh, gun. In fact, they did have a 457mm gun designed a Mark I, and this was going to be the Mark II, which uh, there were design proposals and uh, there were actual submissions made to Vickers and others to start producing some prototypes and to see how that all goes with a newer design with uh, techniques learned from both the Americans and the Germans after the First World War. But then again, uh, 1920 and then 1922, the whole thing happened and then they were never really constructed. The biggest the British in, in fact built at the time were the 406 millimeter that we see on HMS Nelson. But uh, going back to the St. Vincent, this is a hypothetical design, I mean, it's an existing design, so at least it's a paper ship, but it's a hypothetical ship because nobody ever built it, uh, because the whole battle cruiser idea eventually fell flat, because battleships themselves were fast enough that you didn't need to make the trade-off between armor and speed, you could have both. <laughs> so nobody built them, uh, so that's why we have it in-game. Now, uh, I have played the Rook at tier 7, and it was an amazing ship at tier 7. Now, the big question that I would like to answer in this video, is the St. Vincent at tier 10 worth it at the end of the line? Or um, is it a yes, it's great, but sort of question? Now, what do we have here? Let's begin comparing her to some of her peers at tier 10, because uh, we do have a couple. So let's begin with the Conqueror, which has not which does not have the 457 millimeter guns, but which is the Tech Tree Tier 10 battleship. And um, if you ask most people, myself included, it's not very good, even though she has been buffed recently. Now the, the Conqueror gets the rapid reload skill. The St. Vincent has what we're already used to with the engine boosts and uh, giving her a, the British won't like, won't like to hear that, but giving her a distinct French feeling. <laughs> And uh, the defensive AA, plus she is the first in the line actually getting a precise aiming system. And she's darn well needing it. She also has the super heal, or as we call it around here, the heavy repair team. Now the heavy repair team is an interesting one. Because it recovers 75% more hit points from repair kits. In return, you only get two of them, instead of three. Or, in cases like... Um, in cases like, for example, the Thundra, which is the other tier 10 battleship armed with 457mm main guns in the game from the British lines, the Thundra actually gets an extra heal. So, okay. Let's let's have a quick uh, look at how these two compare. Now, the Thundra is... No one's, gonna ex uh, no one's going to be uh, ex uh, accusing the Thundra and the Conqueror in return of being particularly well armored. The St. Vincent is, um, how, how do I put this, um, even worse off. So these, uh, and the numbers here don't really do it justice because you'd say, well, okay, well, she's got the same Citadel protection. She's got 12% uh, damage reduction instead of 13.5%. Yes, what you're not seeing 
are the actual armor plating values on uh, the deck, especially in deck superstructure and uh, and on the main belt. This ship eats damage like crazy. Uh, light cruisers with 150 millimeter armor piercing are shredding straight through this thing. So um, she's taking a lot of damage and uh, the question remains then, is she able to dish out? Now the turn time isn't quite as bad as on the Conqueror. I mean, the Conqueror's, the Conqueror's turn time is generally measured in geological terms rather than in, na in nautical. But uh, uh, the Thundra obviously is significantly more maneuverable than this thing, but she is fast and specifically has very, very good engines which given that it's supposed to be a 1920s design is very surprising, but maybe it is some sort of refit. But the acceleration on these things is pretty good and it needs to be because in classic battlecruiser fashion, she needs to be able to get away from everything that she can't, uh, that, that she needs to outrun everything that she can't fight. And this is tier 10. And there are a lot of things that the St. Vincent cannot fight particularly well. She gets nine of the aforementioned 457mm or 18-inch Mark II guns in three triple turrets, two of them in a normal position and one of them in the awkward right behind the main superstructure position. Uh, by the way, the British did have some problems with the Mark Ones, especially around blast, uh, blast impact and reliability. So uh, how do these compare to the Thunderous? Well, they reload. They don't reload as fast, but she gets more of. She gets one more of them. The range is marginally better, and she does a little bit, although not much more damage on the armor piercing. But she doesn't get. She doesn't quite get the same high explosive. Still very very good high explosive shells. The turret rotation speed of six degrees per second is very very welcome, uh, and darn well needed. Again, but a cruiser here. Uh, the secondaries are. 150s actually, but don't get too excited. They are nowhere near as powerful as, say, the secondaries on German battleships. The auto secondaries with 113 mils and uh, only a four kilometer range are a little bit of a, well, if you find yourself in within four kilometer range of anything in this thing, you are in trouble. So the one thing that she has that none of the other British battleships has is torpedoes. And these are a bit special. First of all, she gets two, yep. Two torpedoes. Uh, we'll have a look at the arcs in a, in a minute. Uh, they have a 31 second reload time, which is very quick for tier 10. But look at the amount of damage that they're doing. 7,000 alpha damage. <laughs> and wait until you see the torpedo angles on this thing. Uh, 8.4 kilometer range, unfortunately only, but a 30% chance of flooding. And the AA is well, it's there, but it's nothing to write home about. She does get the uh, defensive AA-1, which gives you 75% boost on each. So it's okay. It's doable. Like with the, uh, but she's not gonna, she's not gonna have the same AA as necessarily as the rest of the line. Plus you also need to have the defensive AA running. So meh, meh. It's okay, but it's not it's not grand. The concealment is pretty good of 10.2 kilometers. And again, it needs to be. The other things that uh, she does get, uh, she doesn't obviously get the sonar that the Thundra has, but and uh, she does get a better. Actually, no, sorry, she gets the Def AA two. So yes, she does get a de she relatively decent AA once the AA, Def AA is up, and otherwise not so much. The last one I would like to compare her to, uh, pun intended, is HMS Incomparable or co Incomparable, although I do believe it is Incomparable. And. Uh, we we we're seeing we're seeing all the we're seeing all the, uh, the the ship skills here. Plus, incomparable also gets the additional repair kit, whereas the Saint Vincent it's a little hidden here, but actually gets one one less repair kit. Uh, yeah, the 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 whole looks suspiciously similar, although the Saint Vincent does get more hit more hit points on the base. But again, what we're not seeing here is the armor. But um, uh, Incomparable is also not known for being particularly sturdy, so I would say that's probably going to be similar. And uh, uh, again, yeah, maneuverability is always a bit of a question here, and Incomparable does have the larger guns, so she gets the... Uh, not She doesn't just have larger guns, but she also has the extremely powerful 
uh, the extremely high penetration on these armor-piercing shells and the precision to get them on target at range, which means uh, incomparable is uh, incomparable with APCS is just hilarious. She can blow things up in ways that you haven't seen otherwise. Uh, and obviously, incomparable does get longer range torpedoes, and uh, and uh, she does get more of them, but. Uh, obviously not these kind of Mimi torpedoes that we get on the St. Vincent. So I keep on talking about the torpedo angles. Let's quickly go into the training room and I'll show you. So let's start the battle here. Um, it, it does pay to be aware that this thing does have torpedoes. Although she has, these torpedoes are side mounted. So she has one on the left and one on the right. Uh, not like forward and rear or something. But look at the, look at the torpedo angles. Yeah. That's like, that's like what you get. That's like what you get on the inverse on, on <laughs> or the inverse of what you get on a on a Japanese heavy cruiser. Like, you you can't fire torpedoes backwards for for Jack, but you can almost straightforward fire torpedoes on PC. I believe there's a special mechanic that the torpedoes do a little wiggle dance after they've been launched and then orient themselves where they where you want them to go. Don't quite get that, but. Uh, uh, you only have a single torpedo, so widespread, narrow spread doesn't make any difference, but you can fire one here, and then you can fire one there. <laughs> and that's sort of what that looks like. And these torpedoes absolutely hit like a truck. <laughs> so 7,000 uh, alpha damage from these torpedoes, uh, that's not, not, uh, not insignificant. Now, the St. Vincent has a problem, and in my opinion, it's a big problem. Now, not everybody might agree with that, but um, please, please observe, uh, please observe the C turret. Uh, that's the one behind the superstructure. So I'm going to line it up here, and then I am going to uh, slightly move the guns forward. And you see what that turret is doing. Observe, observe the C turret. Yeah, it's the turret bug, which means that if you are pointing the gun straight forward, or just very slightly in this direction and you're changing sides, almost always the stupid turret is pointing in the wrong way. <laughs> because it's not that you can actually, like again, observe, right? The turret is pointing, is pointing rearwards. Because if you're bow in, in a bow-in scenario in the ship, and you're, you're sort of changing frequently between which side you're looking at, that rear turret there, or the, or that, that C turret there, is always going to point to the rear. So if you need it on target, and you say, okay, I'm just going to angle in a little bit to get the C turret on target. Yeah, that's not happening. You got to wait for it to come around because uh, in in many situations, it's either going to be completely on the other side or it's going to point towards the stern of the ship, which isn't doing anyone any good because it can't shoot to the stern of the ship because you have no firepower to the rear. Uh, and the forward turrets also can't really angle around very easily. So you have no rear firepower at all because the superstructure is in the way. Because you can't shoot through your funnels. I mean, you could, but it would be a bad idea. So yes, this ship is affected by the turret bug, which in my opinion makes her really, really awkward to play. But um, let's get back to, let's get back to uh, looking at the, how I've set the ship up. And we get out of this and there we are. All right, so uh, camouflage, first of all. Uh, you do get the historical camouflage, which given that the ship never existed, but still it looks like a, a historical camouflage would have looked like. Uh, this one actually is not the standard battleship camouflage. You get uh, hit points, range, uh, secondary range, and torpedo range. So no torpedo damage reduction. Yay, nobody cares about that anyway. Uh, you do get the industrial camo, and I think there's like a bundle or something that you can currently pick, which doesn't look completely terrible. Uh, again, this this looks decent enough, except for that honking big lantern at the front, which has this slightly steampunky look. And uh, that actually gives you hit points, range, and dispersion on the mains, which is needed. So the rook had the rook had excellent dispersion if she wanted to. She she could be a bit trollish. Uh, this thing not so much. Uh, the dispersion feels very much sort of standard, and uh, that can be that can be really a bit of a, a letdown, especially due to the turret bug, and that you're only going to get six of the guns on target. But um, 
that that is the alternative camouflage, and you get uh, four percent max traverse speed, which is also doing helping, doing some help with the maneuverability. In terms of equipment, I have gone with the main battery mod three because again, uh, dispersion on this ship, I was not impressed. Uh, otherwise, you don't really need the main battery mod 1, except for if you're trying to compensate for the turret bug, but I think you may as well not bother, because if you're sitting there in a, in a single position, waiting for your turret to swing around, with this mod or not, you're probably going to be shot. <laughs> not in a good way. Um, you could go for secondary mod to get to get the uh, to get a bit more uh, to get a bit more firepower out of the secondaries. Uh, the problem I have with this is that you can't really nicely build her for secondary because of the captain skills we get to that in a second uh, i am actually using the steering mod in slot two and that's because i want to use the concealment system in slot three and that i think is very much warranted because you do not want to be seen if you can avoid it it allows you to get into positions more easily and uh, it allows you to potentially disengage if you need to and uh, that can and then heal up Talking about the heal, uh, I did actually run some numbers. Give me a second, I'll, I'll, I'll look them up very quickly. Reach over here. There we go. Uh, I did run some numbers. So uh, the question being, uh, if we had a legendary captain, and uh, if we had a if we had a premium repair kit, would uh, three repair kits? do more or less heal than two repair kits and a super heal? And the answer is the two repair kits and the super heal are healing more back more. In fact, you can get 44,000 points of damage back. So they are uh, they are somewhat better than if you have everything maxed out than uh, the three regular heals. The problem obviously being that uh, you do need to somewhat pace yourself because if you heal too early like if you if you do an early heal uh, you only have two and you're wasting a lot of the potential so you kind of have to wait until the ship's down to half hit points and then you can uh, then you can kick off these uh, these super heals but back to back to the ship uh, so we've gone through the equipment we've gotten through uh, have we looked at the elite bonus i believe we haven't well there's there is only one because who cares about torpedo damage reduction, honestly, on this thing? Uh, main battery reload and main battery traverse. Again, I have played with two commanders, with a legendary commander with Nelson doing the full on uh, the full on HP build and or HP tank build, and I've played with the regular commander, but you would set it up similarly. Now Nelson's got a couple of uh, specialties to him. Uh, the one that I would like to point out, obviously he does get the improved uh, survivalist, but the one that I would point out, like to point out here is that you can't really take close quarters combat expert. Um, with Nelson, I've taken demo expert, but generally I would have taken the engine overload. That's kind of where you want to be. Uh, and uh, that's also why you can't really get the close quarters, which means boosting the secondaries doesn't make that much sense in my opinion and she doesn't get the long range auto secondaries that you have on German battleships either so um, not quite that setup but other than that it's really your choice I am going with armor piercing cap shell here I just wanted to see how well the uh, the AP performs with the APCS and uh, giant hunter really it probably isn't worth it I would probably go with horizontal protection here because that ship is eating damage for breakfast. It's crazy. She is getting worn down very, very quickly. So, with all that out of the way, and it's, I realize it's been taking a while, but uh, these things do generally, let's have a look at two battles. First game, gonna be a regular commander uh, without armor piercing cap shell and with, uh, with regular heals. And uh, the second battle is gonna be with Nelson with premium heals to see how much of a difference that can make. The first round, obviously being a tier 10 battle, base capture and encounter, good old encounter, against uh, Monty, Venezia, Baltimore, Sejong, and a Shimakaze. Now, this ship is quick, I'll give her that, and the gun layout sort of gives you the idea that you can kind of play around islands. Also, the torpedo angles are very much geared towards forward firing. So, having a sort of Nelson like playstyle and a generally a cru more cruiser oriented playstyle where you do where you're keeping your 
um, keeping yourself protected by islands is not a terrible idea. So engine boost up uh, just to so we can keep up with the Balti and the Smolensk here. And yeah, there you see the you see the problem of the you see the problem of the turrets, right? I'm pointing my I'm pointing my guns to starboard, and the turret is locked on the forward position on port. It's not so. I, I need to switch my guns around in order to make something happen. Most of the time, I'm only going to be able to use the two forward turrets. Okay, that's the Nizomor. I don't really necessarily want to shoot that yet. Uh, just now that I'm spotted anyway, which means there is probably the Shimakaze over somewhere here. And uh, that means I do need to get myself out of... Um, and do need to get, get myself out of trouble here. But as you can see, obviously now the... Uh, and I'm going to drop my torpedo into one of them. Sorry, Smolensk, pushing you out of the way here. Yeah, the turret, the, the sea turret is mostly useless unless you are pre-aligning correctly. And uh, do have to be a little bit careful. I think that's a bot Fletcher coming around the other side. But um, I do need to get out of the way of that uh, Smolensk now. And uh, we can make ourselves useful and do something about the Fletcher, at, obviously at this range, but uh, Bot Fletcher is dead. Uh, the Smolensk smokes up, and there comes the Shimakaze. That's, uh, that's what I assumed, that he was going to be around here somewhere. So that is almost dead, and Smolensk is going to take him out. But um, uh, there is obviously now a Shimakaze, and we need to get out of here. Now, you could, you could think, okay, start using your heal, you know, you're down to 47,000 hit points. No, nope, no, nope, not yet. Too early. <laughs> Don't use your heal too early. But uh, excuse me, everyone, I do need to get out of here. Yep, because of that, because there are torpedoes. So um, engine boost up, Shima. Fortunately, the Shima only, uh, only dropped one load. So uh, I can now start using the heal. And we can get ourselves back up after using after dam after damaging that. And uh, at this point, I noticed that our left flank is completely collapsing. On the eastern flank on our side, there's a Venezia, and uh, I am in a very fast ship, so I'm doing I'm doing over 35 knots, and uh, that means I can make myself useful over there and help out uh, help out against that ship. Now, if you're fully broadsiding, it's not so much of an issue with the with the sea turret. The problem is, if you're fully broadsiding in this thing, you've got other problems. Okay, uh, Venezia is going to try and get torpedoes away, so we'll do the same thing, and then try to get the turrets on target, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, at this range, <laughs> uh, AP, no, don't, don't need no APCS for that. Yeah, you were trying to get your torpedoes away. You probably would have done more damage with the guns, honestly, against this ship. I'm only taking one, but now um, I do need to make myself scarce here. Scarce. It is, Terry. Scarce. Because uh, just, just to prevent Venezia from outflanking us. And yes, I am already I'm already low on hit points again. And uh, trying to trying to take her down. I just not got enough just didn't get the luck to, to make that happen. But there is probably there are probably gonna be torpedoes. And yes, uh, semi armor piercing is actually a good choice against the ship. Yep, there come there come the Venezia torpedoes. Uh, semi armor piercing is a good choice, but now I'm going to back behind the island and uh, heal up against uh, again a little bit. But that's it. That's all the, the hit points I'm ever going to have. And I haven't even been fighting any battleships just yet. I've just been shot at by cruisers. But uh, this ship is very much not uh, capable of, uh, of tanking anything. And uh, let's see what else is coming around. That Venezia has a one-shot, but that's a full health Monty. And I'm on 25,000 hit points, and those 25,000 hit points are all I'm ever going to get. So, um, run away! <laughs> uh, obviously, I can't kite away in this thing, but I can back off. I mean, the, the sea turret is pretty much useless anyway, so I may as well do that. So I, I, can, I can back off and uh, try to dodge as much of the incoming fire as possible. Now, um, Monty isn't stupid. He's only been firing his forward turrets, and uh, the, he he is basically he's basically um, sequencing his turrets. So he, he's, fi he's 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 always got something he's always got something ready. Uh, yep, there come the forward turrets again, and that was probably the rapid reload given the timing. Uh, and that means I can't really turn because I can't I can't play out a salvo here. And uh, I am gonna have to just stay bow in and stay in reverse, and uh, see what see what I can do, uh, see what I can do with the forward two gun turrets because these are all I'm ever gonna be getting on target anyway. So there comes that again. Uh, dispersion is relatively comparable to what you have at battleships at this um, 
uh, if the Monty wasn't giving full broadside there. Oh, nice no, to the Sejong as well. <laughs> okay, so that means torpedoes. He's playing it smart. He is sitting behind the Monty. Although uh, with my dispersion, it might be possible that um, he'd actually be taking some shots. But he is sitting behind the uh, the Monty. He's now doing fuel smoke, and um, the guns work okay. Uh, the 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 penetration is all right, and. Uh, we are, but we are very much out of hit points at this point. So all I can, all I can really get out of this is probably one last salvo, and then either the Sejong or the Montana are going to kill me. And uh, that still got us the big caliber Hail Mary torpedo away, but uh, with a relatively short range on these torpedoes, all I've done is slow them down. But all I really wanted to do also was to slow them down. So uh, Jinan Yamato. And something else. Uh, you might want to get your butts over here, because I've done all I could, and I've got Monty down to a one-shot kill. But uh, someone's someone's going to do it, because he he ain't running into my torpedo, unfortunately. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. But uh, no, he isn't. So someone needs to kill that. And there is also the Sejong um, going around there. I think we'll be leading on points once you kill the Monty. But then it, it, it just means you don't, you have to not die. So that's a full health, almost full health Baltimore. Okay, Jinan takes him out. Jinan, you need to get out of there. Because uh, there's a full health um, Sejong coming there. And you're on half hit points. And you're never going to torpedo that thing. So uh, get out of there. Uh, before yeah, before somebody, before that Baltimore is blapping you into the next game. Yeah, Sejong isn't stupid. Uh, that means also that Sejong isn't going to get his torpedoes away, but that Jinan is playing with fire. If he dies, we lose, and we are actually on we actually on a draw. <laughs> we actually equal on on points. So very very close, but um, we are on a draw, and uh, we've done eighty thousand points of damage. That wasn't terrible, uh, but uh, yeah, one of the big weaknesses of the ship is is the armor. And or the absolute lack thereof. So if you if you don't have a situation where your team is tanking for you, it gets really really difficult. But uh, let's go with the full Nelson in this case. And it's a carrier game, Domination Blue Front. It's one of the new maps, I believe. Uh, Malta, Monty, Smolensk, Jinan, Austin, Z52, and Z46. You're not very good against destroyers either, <laughs> because you don't necessarily have the dispersion. And the secondaries are okay, but you're no German battlecruiser. So uh, I'm hesitant to um, uh, head into, say, D-Cup on my own, because you are very much a big target and a very squishy target, even for even for uh, for cruisers. So I'm probably just going to stick with the Petro over here, who has... A decent amount of firepower and uh, I'm gonna lend some AA support at the very least because I do have four def AAs that I can use but it looks like the carrier is going the other direction which means uh, okay the Fletcher is gonna t is gonna take B cup that is unnecessary Zhao is already doing it Fletcher would have been super useful on this flank here um, especially that the carrier isn't scouting but uh, he, he wants to go center uh, there is C-52. He is, I think, stopping uh, to dodge some to dodge the enemy uh, the the aircraft torpedo strike, and he has dodged the torpedo strike, but uh, that allowed me to get a couple of shots on target. But it also means that I'm now detected, and there's a Jinan in Smolensk. Now, generally, you would say if you're in a battleship, uh, you do have to be relatively careful with the Jinan and the Smolensk, obviously. But if you get these guys at seven kilometers then uh, things are not going to end up well for them. So let's see how that goes. Precise this, by the way, is with APCS. So precise aim up, shots out at the Smolensk. Again, we can only ever get six guns on target unless someone is broadsiding us because of the turret bug. And uh, we do have to back off now because Jinan is going to have torpedoes away. I mean, that's why. That's what he that's, that's what he does, right? Why, why, he, why I was able to spot him is anybody's, anybody's guess. He should have been able to torpedo me without being spotted. Uh, so I'm gonna get a blind shot out at the Smolensk, but yeah, there come the uh, there come the obvious Jinan torpedoes. So that's why I'm not sitting around here, not yet popping the heel. Just remember, don't pop the heel early. I'm just getting in a position to run away because I'm now being he spammed by a Jinan and a Smolensk. That has the advantage, however, that I'm angled against the Montana back there, which means I can sit here, sit here sort of broadside, 
and try to get some shots out at these things. Unfortunately, it, there is a Z46. Oh crap. <laughs> and if he hadn't opened up, I probably wouldn't have even noticed him. So heal up, print myself a new ship, as Jingles used to say. <laughs> And then just engine boost the crap out of here, because I am not going to dodge these torpedoes, I'm just going to outrun them. Because <laughs> if this thing is one thing, then, it, then that's that it's fast. And that torpedo unfortunately has missed. But uh, I can now sort of defend myself against the Jinan. I have no idea if that thing's got torpedoes ready, but he should be dead in any time soon. Given that I'm getting semi-pens with APCS, uh, with 457mm against the Jinan, is quite telling. But Petra has taken them down. So um, I can make myself scarce here and uh, do some long-range gunnery while while my, my heal and everything is coming off cooldown and see if we can do anything fancy about that Smolensk over there. But at this range, yeah, not so much. But uh, that looks like he just got blubbed in the side by the Petro, who is significantly better suited for that sort of thing than I am. But uh, Petro, there's a Z46. Uh, he is coming under fire and I've got the armor piercing loaded, so I'm going to shoot the armor piercing at that thing. But Petro, there's a Z46. Uh, surely, surely, uh, there's also Grosser Kur first. Surely you have this, right? Surely you have you have that under control. GK has got um, GK has got uh, got hydro and has just been taken out by the Z52. <laughs> okay, so I haven't changed to HE because I thought all oh, these guys are gonna have it. But um, uh, Petro, surely you've got this, right? Z Z Z Z46 right next to you. Uh, Petro, Petro. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> okay, I think he has realized that he's there, but he's lucky that that thing was out of torpedoes. But, um, uh, I, I still haven't reloaded the HE because I wasn't planning to having to deal with that destroyer myself, but it looks like I do. And there he is. He's now dead, which gives me the close quarters expert. There's Austin over there, still not uh, triggering the next heal because uh, that can heal back a little bit more than that. And it looks like the carrier is mostly ignoring me, which I can live with. So he's trying to finish off the Petro, to be fair. So shots out at the Austin from here. Let's see. It's a not a great angle, so let's see what we can do. Nothing, that is, because the Austin has used the, uh, WASD hacks. But uh, there is a Monty over there, and I do have to be very careful with that thing. So I'm slowing down, trying to get the island between myself and uh, potentially any kind of Montana torpedoes. Uh, Montana torpedoes, Montana shells. But uh, Monty uh, isn't taking isn't taking it and is backing off, so I'm going to trigger the heal and then I'm going to have to go defensive against the Montana while the carrier still keeps ignoring me. And there is an Austin over there and that thing does have torpedoes, I believe. So I do have to be careful here and again back off and get away. You've seen, if, if you poke around an island and you've pre-aligned the, the turrets, you can get it off, uh, you can get off the third turret quite nicely. But uh, now I do need to also dodge the enemy carrier and uh, have mostly done so. Uh, torpedoes away at the Montana. Now, to the Montana's credit, uh, not everybody knows what these things are capable of just yet, because, well, they haven't been released yet. They're in pre-release. Pre and if, you're not have, if you haven't been paying attention, then um, uh, you're not particularly familiar and know that these things have torpedoes. But uh, that should be a dead Montana, which means I can now engine boost my acceleration forward. <laughs> And that was a single torpedo hit, which took out the Monty's engine, but hasn't quite killed him because it was only one torpedo. And uh, that means we still need to finish him off with the guns, but we should be up. We got that done before the Montana was able to do anything. And my torpedoes already reloaded. So now it's just the Austin who is probably going to go for a torpedo run. I am out of heals. So these 20, 20 odd thousand things are all, uh, hit points are all I'm going to get. Double fire, con a Damacon. Carrier does an airstrike on the Austin. Austin triggers the fast reload, trying to do perma fires. Not going to happen because my Damacon is is off cooldown, and you are now you have now been torpedoed by a battle cruiser, <laughs> and I am now very much out of hit points. And we are leading by less than 90 points, but that should be sufficient. We're equal on we're equal on caps, and I believe the carrier has different different problems. Although if the carrier kills me and the destroyer, then that might work, but I don't think it's going to happen. So I'm just going to park myself in B cup and get some capture points and stay out of the way of things while the carrier has to deal with the destroyer that has been chasing him down instead of going for the capture circles. To be fair, there was an Austin in the in the enemy cup, in C cup, so I, as a destroyer I wouldn't have gone there in, in there either, so that's all good. But yeah, the St. Vincent. Um, I think if if they fix the turret bug, it's a ship, it's a decent ship. Uh, as it stands, I am not super convinced. 
because you're effectively playing with six guns uh, per, per, permanently or for 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 ninety percent of the battle, and um, that just it, it's it's that that just makes it not great. It's like an ismo, <laughs> and. Uh, I, I, what I like about the ship is, well, the guns are, are nice and hard hitting. The uh, the torpedoes are sort of gimmicky, so don't really rely on those. It's it's all about positioning. It's all about the um, and it's all about the main guns in this line. The secondaries are kind of okay, but they're really not what you're what you're going to be doing your damage with. Uh, the armor is dreadful, such that you really really have to be you really have to be looking out for for yourself. And uh, while you are able to heal back more hit points in total than you would with three with three regular repair kits uh, due to the super heal, it still doesn't quite compensate for the uh, for the arcane amount of <laughs> of damage that you're taking. Plus, you don't get the extra the extra repair kit that you get on some other British ships. So, yeah. For me, it's the turret bug. If the turret bug gets fixed, then I might consider the ship. Otherwise, I would uh, I would say for the time being, avoid. Uh, unless you just want to get it with the hopes that uh, that this gets fixed at some point. But um, uh, it's not a terrible ship. But uh, you really being shut. Like, you are being shut down very easily in this ship, and y you do struggle sometimes to dish out. The damage because she only has two thirds of her damage potential with the main guns just because of that now if you can park yourself behind an island and your team tanks for you and you can just you know poke your nose out get your turrets on target and shoot that's very nice yes uh can please tell me how many games uh you've been playing where you did not have to you know i don't know um hold a flank down or um rapidly maneuver while or go uh, defensive bow in against an enemy ship Stuff like that. Anyway, uh, that's it for me today. And uh, that was the St. Vincent. So make of it what you want. I'll personally probably not be grinding the line just yet, but I'll be very keen to get my hands on the tier 7. I will be testing the rest of the line, don't worry. But I just wanted to see what the tier 10 is capable of. Anyway, see you all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>